situation. It's up to each member of the Compost Council of Canada to review the draft of the B&Q, if they so decide, and to make individual comments uh, within the time frame. So um, uh, the key thing right now is just to give you an overview. And I'm going to change the slide. Um, doesn't seem to be going. Okay, so as you all know, um, we're in the business of recycling organics. Um, the ultimate goal, though, is to produce products that are valued in the marketplace. And so the standards document really focuses at the end product. How you get to the end product is up to the individual processor and um, uh, in those who are involved in collecting the feedstocks. But so what we're focused on is at the end of the loop, having the product compost and getting it ready for the marketplace. Um, as you know, this is uh, quite an interesting year for all those involved in organics recycling to um, really broaden the perspective in terms of the fact that organics, as they are um, developed through composting, have a fundamental role in the health of the soil. And it, um, it, there are tons and tons of barriers that we have to knock down. And with the fact that the United Nations declared 2015 as the year of the soil, this is a, a very valuable conversation that we're having right now in terms of the changes in the rules for compost from a voluntary perspective. Compost standards in Canada are basically spearheaded by four organizations. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency, the CFIA, if you sell your compost, you need to conform with the CFIA's rules. Um, the Canadian Council of Ministers of the Environment, that's a voluntary organization where all the provinces and territories have a seat at the table, an equal seat at the table, and they discuss harmonizing uh, regulations. There is no um, intrinsic um, regulatory power within the CCME. Uh, once the conversation and the decisions are made at the CCME table, it's up to each individual province and territory to go back to their home and implement regulations or standards based on that conversation. They are not obliged to do it. They can make changes to it. Some provinces, some territories in the regulations as it pertains to compost just refer to the CCME document. Others have a individual document guidelines that might have some information from the CCME, might not. Um, but uh, from a harmonized perspective, the CCME is where the discussion within the provinces and territories are at. The Standards Council of Canada are also involved in the development of compost standards. Um, they uh, are a national overview uh, group. They have a number of agencies that are part of their team. Um, the Canadian Standards Association, CSA, is one of those uh, members. Um, the B&Q, the Bureau de Normalisation du Québec, is also another of those members. And it is the B&Q that uh, has the mandate to help spearhead standards for uh, compost. And the fourth organization is the Compost Council of Canada through our CQA program. And that also is, is um, excuse me, I'm not sure if it's you. I see. Hi, I understand perhaps you might not have been hearing me. Okay. Can you hear now? Okay. Nope. Uh, hi, Jolene. I can hear you fine. Yeah, I can hear you fine, Susan. Can you? Okay. Yep. So then I'll just ignore the conversation that's going on with Danielle and someone. So um, the Compost Co uh, Council of Canada has spearheaded a voluntary program called the CQA that gets beyond, that basically captures the essence of the regulations and uh, focuses on the differences in terms of market interest for compost to look at different parameters uh, that goes over and beyond the um, first three organizations' efforts. Okay. So by regulation, there's two organizations that we have to pay attention to. The CFIA, as I said, if you sell compost, you have to 
uh, fall in line with the CFIA. They have the power to uh, stop sale. We've had some, com I think most of our members know this, uh, it's very important whether it's bulk or bag, you have to comply and you have to, your label is, is very important. Uh, if you don't sell in bags, the label can be your invoice through your bulk sales. Um, the bag is, is, is considered a, a label as well in terms of, as you know, if you put your website on your a label or on your invoice, um, then uh, the CFIA has the um, right to go into your website to make sure that your claims conform with the requirements of the CFIA Fertilizer Act and regulations. And then the other um, um, regulatory body are the provinces and territories, either directly lifting the CCME document or adjusting it to their own needs. From a voluntary perspective, the Standards Council of Canada is a voluntary, you do not have to comply. There might be a province that will adopt the B&Q, but that's a provincial decision. It's a voluntary standard um, and you pay to play. So if you choose to get a B&Q um, mark on your label, you will have to go through uh, conforming with the requirements of the B&Q document standard and also um, managing the audit process. And that is a cost to the facility processor to, to manage. But then you have the right to um, put the B&Q logo on your bags or your labels. And then the Compost Council of Canada is also a voluntary um, um, standard. And ag again, there is an audit process. Um, there is, um, a, on an ongoing basis, there will be a fee. Right now, there is not a fee. And it is managed by the members of the CQA. The linkages with the CFIA and CCME, because we very much want to make sure that everyone has got a heads up perspective on the fact that the BNQ uh, document is, is under review and is uh, subject to a new change. Because there is a very strong linkage between the BNQ document and the CFIA and the CCME. There was, uh, at the beginning of time, in the early 90s, when uh, compost standards were, were developed, there was a, a, a very uh, noble and uh, specific intent to harmonize the standards between uh, Ag Canada, AFC, Environment Canada, the CCME, and the BNQ to go ahead and make sure that there are the three documents, the three organizations have a right to discuss standards, and that those documents that they each of them have, and there's their right, has some flow to it. So right now there is, based on the latest uh, review, which was in 2005, there is some very strong harmony between the um, CFIA, the CCME, and the BNQ. With BNQ now stepping up to another review, that harmony is not, um, not there. And so there is potential for any changes from the BNQ document to then go towards the CCME for a review as well as for further discussions with the CFIA. So although it's, it's voluntary, it does have strings attached to two regulatory bodies. And so this is your time to review it um, and, and make your comments or add new uh, concepts because after the public consultation period is closed, that's it. So in the 1990s, there were criteria and there were testing protocols. Um, right now, the today's discussion is based on the 2015 proposed draft. The latest one that um, BNQ had pre that was based on 2005. It can be found on the members only section of the uh, Compost Council of Canada. And so if any of you don't have that, uh, please or can access the members section. Um, if you're a member of the council, touch base with us and we'll scoot you over the um, information as well as anyone from Manitoba um, through the support of Green Manitoba. Uh, otherwise, you'll have to touch base with uh, B&Q directly. So the Standards Council of Canada, uh, where do they fit? And uh, B&Q, 
uh, the, there was an opportunity in the early 90s to develop voluntary industry standards. In the history of our industry, the BNQ was selected to champion the Standards Council of Canada standard. And uh, Mark Hebert from the Ministry of Environment and Climate Change in Quebec did a, has done a great um, uh, document that basically talks the history. And uh, we've put the uh, link to that um, document in this presentation. The BNQ has uh, the standard is done. And then what happens every five years, the BNQ touches base with um, uh, stakeholders in the industry and said, would you like to review the document? Would you, is there any new technical scientific information that you want to, or, or practical information in terms of how compost is produced that you need to go ahead and have a discussion on. And so as I said, uh, the, the last one was in 2005. And a couple of years ago, when BNQ approached um, members of the industry, they asked, is it time? And the answer is yes. The, um, the, uh, in 2005, as I talked about, the, the BNQ review was very important in terms of adjustments that were then subsequently made to the CCME document because the public consultation of the BNQ process is, is so broad. Um, there's uh, there's uh, basically about two months to go ahead and let folks know. There is a very open process in terms of you providing comments, the way you make comments. And that, in combination with discussions at the CCME, resulted in changes to the guidelines for compost quality by the CCME. At this point, there has not been any discussion that any changes into the 2015 document for BNQ will go to the CCME. But as you know, CCME um, has now um, moved into an organic waste um, committee. Um, they have triggered an RFP for review of um, the current state of the art of composting and organics recycling and aerobic digestion in Canada. So it's not, it's not untoward to expect that there could be a question, does CCME need to make a change to their existing document? Hi, Susan. Sorry mm -hmm. for interrupting. Yeah. Um, there's a bit of a vibration in your audio, and then every okay. once in a while it kind of sounds like a fast forward. Is there something wrong with your connection, or? Um, I'm not sure. Um, it, it's just my regular phone line. How does that sound? Th now it's fine. OK, let's see how it goes. I'm just okay. using my regular phone. OK. Let's hope it um, works. Um, so the 2014-2015 review by the B&Q was triggered by the combination support of RACI Quebec, the um, the Ministry of Agriculture for Quebec, the Ville de Montréal, the City of Montreal, and the Compost Council of Canada through the support of Green Manitoba and the Nova Scotia Department of Environment. It was very important for the Compost Council of Canada to ensure that the conversation, any conversation in terms of changes to the BNQ was a national conversation. And so um, because of the initiatives done by Receipt Quebec, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture in Quebec, the Ville de Montréal, we were honored to be able to have the support uh, from, uh, from the financial support from Green Manitoba and Nova Scotia Department of Environment to allow for a national discussion. The review process is such that there's a 15-person committee, and it represents a, um, a balanced perspective in the conversation. Um, there's five folks from industry. Uh, five that uh, are involved in end markets and interest groups, which include government. There were multiple meetings, and it's not a democracy. It's based on consensus. So you basically battle out your point, and, and there's a vote. Um, but it has to be basically um, agreed to by the collective group. The important part is, is that um, the game is on now for every member of the industry and, and those who have an interest in organics recycling through the public consultation process to make their comments and opinions known. The, uh, the draft documents are available on, through the BNQ. For those of you who haven't downloaded it, it's pretty easy. You can go ahead and, and get them through the connect on this, um, this link. If you can't access them, call us at the council and we'll scoot them over to you. They're available in both English and French. There's a total of six documents. 
uh, one that is focused on the overview of the standard, and then uh, uh, two that are in uh, more of the details in terms of the testing and the, the methodology. And they're available in both English and French. And regardless of, your, um, of the language that you are most comfortable with speaking, that being either English or French, uh, your comments can go, be forwarded to the uh, B&Q in that language. So you have till August 25th. Um, you need to send them by email to Sylvain Allard, who um, has this uh, email address. And uh, they definitely have to be on the, the forms that are just showing up now on the, the presentation. You need to go ahead and um, you just can't say, I don't like this. You have to um, refer to the specific section. You have to identify what, the, what, you, what you like or what you want changed or what you don't like. Then you also have to provide rationale. Um, uh, a, a, a simple comment of, I don't like it, won't go anywhere. You have to back, your, back up your comments with, with facts and other documentation. So these are the two, it's, uh, the forms, it's either English or French, and that's what you, how you provide your comments. Uh, what will happen then is that Sylvain will receive, and, and he's quite strict, uh, and that's a good thing in terms of he, um, there is a process, and that helps us as an industry because it's very well known. It's a, it's a regular process of the Standards Council of Canada. It's not unique to the compost industry. So this is a process. Um, you submit your, your comments. Uh, the B&Q uh, through Sylvain Allard will summarize those comments. And there's one more meeting of the committee. And that committee is likely to meet as part of our National Compost Conference in Gatineau in September. So there's not that much time, uh, uh, you know, that August 25th is, is an important date to meet. Once uh, that, and then what will happen at that meeting is that Sylvain will summarize all the comments that are received uh, uh, concerning the standard and the rationale as to why there should be changes or, or whatever are the comments then will be discussed by the committee and any adjustments to the draft will be done. Once that's done, then it's closed. The draft documents are finalized, and then it goes internally to B&Q and the Standards Council of Canada, and they have a process leading to the issuance of the updated standard. So these are the uh, two cover pages of the standard. It's um, uh, in English and French. Um, and uh, basically, I'm not going to go through every, every line. Um, I think it's important, uh, if you haven't done so already, for uh, you to have a copy of the 2005 standard, the existing standard, um, uh, for the BNQ so that you can go ahead and match to see where the, any adjustments are. Um, I'll try and give you kind of an overview. Um, the role of this presentation is not to defend the changes. I'm not going to get into that. Um, it's more to point out some of the major changes. So um, the, the scope, uh, in the upfront document, there's a lot of you know, front pages that talk about, um, uh, it's just basically the, the warm-up stage, who was involved, what the, the process is. And then you get into the meat. I think it's about page, uh, well, actually, the, the pre-pages before you get into the meat, they don't have any numbers. So the first page is when you, page one is when things get into definitions and scope. So the scope uh, applies to compost from different sources, sold and distributed in either bags or in bulk. Um, there are definitions. You need to look at those definitions. You need to make sure you're comfortable with those definitions. Most have not changed. Um, so compost, uh, the noun, and uh, again, the noun in terms of composting, those are pretty much uh, static and a lot there's a lot of similarity to the CCME document. Foreign matter is defined as anything greater than two millimeters and it, it, it results from human intervention. So there's some exclusions that really come uh, down from mother nature. Uh, maturity, there's a, a definition in terms of maturity. Um, and then also in terms of, I think you need to focus in on uh, the foreign matter 
um, the foreign matter uh, definition um, because there is a there is a acknowledgement in terms of sharps and um, I don't have it on this presentation but there is an ex, uh, an extra note to sharp foreign matter and there was a significant amount of discussion at the committee in terms of what is or is not truly sharp and so there is an acknowledgement of bluntness and um, in terms of uh, whether that fits into um, it does not fit into the the updated version of the definition of sharp okay getting into um, specific requirements in terms of moisture content um, should not exceed 65 percent um, total organic matter content there's been a change to that uh, in terms of um, uh, and I don't want to get into all the differences in change, but I'm going to no note that there is a change. Um, AA has gone down from 50 to 40, and type B has gone down from 30 to 25 proposed. In terms of uh, foreign matter, that's both sharp as well as just general foreign matter. And um, there is... Um, uh, a change in terms of um, in terms of bulk for type A um, bags um, have basically there should be no sharp foreign matter in bag product in type A bulk compost products there is a proposed the proposal is that there is um, some acknowledgement that there could be some sharp foreign matter, although very limited. So that's a change in the document between 2005 and 2015. Uh, foreign matter, um, uh, also there's been some adjustments to the charts in terms of the number of pieces and the uh, type of pieces. And, and um, there is a significant, significant conversation about um, the practicality and the reality of uh, processing organic materials, particularly from um, uh, green bin, and so there have been some adjustments to foreign matter content. So you need to go ahead and look at the differences between the 2005 document and the 2015 proposed, and um, and uh, uh, comment if if you think that's appropriate or not. It's up to each of you to make your comments known. In terms of um, the sharp, and this is more of a summary in terms of the uh, sharp foreign matter, the bagged compost, as I said, there is nothing that can be in in terms of sharp foreign matter, but in terms of bulk, there has been some adjustments. Uh, the next uh, part of the draft is in trace elements. And there have been some um, adjustments to, uh, to some of the uh, materials, the elements. Um, Again, I'm not going to identify them all, but um, for instance, molybdenum in uh, the 2005 document was in uh, types A, AA, and A was five, and uh, this time around it's proposed to be ten. Um, uh, uh, lead was also reduced, and there was a considerable discussion again uh, in terms of these the reasons why these changes were made was based on a best achievable approach. Um, in terms of type B, there were some uh, um, tightening up of some of the uh, maximum contents for certain elements. Uh, for E. coli, there was also um, some discussion and there is a uh, difference between uh, how the CFIA looks at E. coli versus what is being proposed at uh, the BNQ level. And so um, from a, um, based on your review, it would be important for us to get your perspective on this, for us to continue the conversation with the CFIA in terms of any changes that needs to be done um, based on industry input. Salmonella. Um, uh, there uh, was also some, uh, I don't think that there was any changes to this, but again, this is an important part of the conversation in terms of making sure that um, um, the linkages between CCME and CFIA 
are, are harmonized. Maturity and stability. There was considerable discussion about the existing tests uh, available for maturity and stability. And so a new one has been added to um, the options. So now there are not just three, but there are four. And the test uh, has been developed. For those of you who have been to many of the uh, compost regional, compost matters regional workshops and our national conference, you know that Paul Arnold has, Dr. Paul Arnold from um, Dalhousie, has been doing uh, considerable work on maturity and um, has come up with a test. And, uh, and so he, um, his, his, his test has been reviewed by the BNQ and it's proposed to be adopted as one of the tests. So um, uh, it was a very milestone method because this is made in Canada and, and uh, it's a, it was a, a very, very major part of the conversation to include uh, Paul Arnold's um, from Arcadia University's test. So in terms of the last part that we wanted to raise is in terms of the marking and labeling. And um, this is really important because, again, it can tie in to what you're going to be obliged to do through either the CFIA or um, your, your province's territories. And so it's very important to basically make sure that you're comfortable with um, the wording and uh, to make sure that you're comfortable in terms of the image that we're presenting to the industry, to the world, in terms of the value of compost and the safety aspects in terms of compost. So if you have some suggestions, if you like the wording, that's, and that's one comment too, if you uh, approve of any of the proposed changes, um, then it would be also worthy for you to acknowledge that. Um, and, and if you don't uh, want a change or you have a better suggestion, then do um, identify it. So again, the consultation period is open until August 25th. Uh, you send your, your comments on um, pre-created pre uh, forms by the BNQ. Um, it would um, it, it does not have to go to anyone else. If you want to send a copy to the Compost Council of Canada, you can do that. We do have a seat at the table, uh, and many of our members are at the table as well. Um, but it, um, you can be assured that if, if it's received by uh, Sylvain, he will, he will share it with the whole committee. And again, um, the comment forms. And uh, this all will come together at the National Conference in September in Gatineau. Um, there will be, um, um, right now there's plans for the B&Q to have the meeting. Um, I believe it's going to be the day before our conference starts. Um, and so there is an opportunity for an ongoing discussion, but again, the cutoff date is August 25th if you uh, truly want to have um, you know, uh, a conversation for the committee. And, and that's basically it. The next steps then is that if you don't have a copies of the documentation, um, uh, either contact the BNQ through the links on the web on the presentation. Contact us; we'll scoot them over to you. Um, if you're a member of the council, all the documentation for the 2005 um, uh, standards are on the members only section. If there is any issue, uh, you can either uh, touch base with us. If you're not a member and you're not in Manitoba, you need to touch base with the BNQ. Do you have any questions? All right. Thank you, Susan. It's always nice to have someone walk us through these documents. Um, so the common question is, will this slide deck be available after the webinar in uh, both PDF and recorded um, as a recorded audio session. So, and I believe we have done them in the past and they're available on the Compost Council of Canada website. Yep, it's up there, I think front page. Excellent. So if anyone has any questions, there's plenty of time to ask Susan.
Maybe we can get the discussion if anyone has anything that they would like to see added to the document. That's a, that's a good, if it becomes an issue for a member of the council uh, or those in, uh, that have facilities in Manitoba, that they would like to have a conversation with more than themselves uh, and they want to go ahead and, and engage the council uh, in the time remaining to August 25th, we would be pleased if you give us a call for us to arrange for conversations with other members of the council for you to have um, uh, perhaps broader uh, conversation about uh, what you're proposing. Um, it, it is not a I guess in terms of if, if there's only one um, submission that has um, a particular comment that and there's say a total of 30 submissions, provided that you have the documentation and that you've um, put your points forward, that doesn't mean that you're only one vote out of 30. Um, it's, it's, it's the quality of your submission that, that is important. Mm -hmm. Uh, we do have one question that came in here uh, regarding the new Arnold method for determining maturity. Uh, is there a standard method of the protocol that we can review? Yeah, uh, it's available on, on the, some of the um, uh, supporting documentation. In um, so we have the six, we have the three documents, and so it's uh, it's available in the supporting documentation. And another question regarding the dimension of a contaminant. Is it two millimeters in any any direction or any dimension? So whether it's width, length, height, uh, is that defined? Um, it, it's in, I believe it's in any, yes, it's in any, any direction. So it, right now it says any material greater than two millimeters in dimension. So it's, it's undefined in terms of whether it's east, west, or north, south, or. What other opportunities other than the conference uh, will there be discussions around this document that perhaps the public could engage in? Uh, Again, uh, the time frame right now is between now and August 25th. So if you want another conversation, uh, you would have to trigger it. Uh, you know, the best place, obviously I, I'm biased, but the best place would be to call the council and say we want to have another conversation. Uh, I, the reason why I'm biased on that front is that we have a broad membership from across the country, coast to coast to coast. Um, but you can go ahead and um, you you can go ahead and do your own initiatives. Um, if you want uh, the council to um, help you in terms of um, any of the background for any of the changes, uh, we can go ahead and get into those depths with you individually. Um, and um, so, but the date, you know, the conference is one thing, but that date, that August 25th, that's it. That's, that's the marker moment for you. So we have between, and that's why we're really happy that we were able to um, use this webinar as a kind of another um, heads up. It's out there. There is all kinds of reasons to say that if it changes on the B&Q, it could, it could definitely change in, in, in at least one province, and it could then go to the CCME and have that kind of conversation. And of course, there is the conversation in terms of what's decided with, because there are changes to the methodologies and some of the testing, it allows us then to have other conversations with the CFIA. And the import of the B&Q is that we can say this was a public consultation. This was input from all the industry. The, all the industry had the chance. If you don't take advantage of the chance, then it basically becomes, um, you know, it, you, you're then going to be faced with the question, well, why didn't you provide input? You had the chance. All right. I'm not seeing any other uh, questions pop up here. Um, maybe you could just give us a little more about at the conference, 
or when this discussion will be held? Will it be the final document that will be discussed? Or? Uh, it won't likely be to the final document. Um, so our conference is uh, basically three days plus an extra. So um, the, the extra day is a training course on the Tuesday. Um, the Wednesday is the tours. Uh, and as you know, we have uh, tours to um, both compost facilities as well as um, an anaerobic digestion facility. And then on Thursday morning, there is a, um, a concurrent, no, there's a plenary session that will talk about a whole variety of standards that are out there. And so that will be the conversation uh, in terms of giving you a heads up. Um, but uh, it's very unlikely. I, I'm not quite sure. It'll be up to B and Q to, the, to decide how, how much information will be relayed based on um, the committee conversation. Um, right now, because of holidays and everything like that, I'm, um, we haven't heard definitively whether the committee will meet at the conference. It, it's expected that it will, but um, uh, we haven't um, heard the definitive. So the likelihood is that um, the B&Q committee meeting will happen on the Tuesday, uh, and Sylvain uh, from the B&Q, we're hoping, will be presenting on the Thursday. But again, um, I know I've said it, it, it it's really, it's the, the time is now to make your comments. That August 25th date is, they're very strict and it gets into, it's not something that, you know, the council can help you change or anything like that. You know, the answer back will be, you had the chance, you were told, alerted, um, and there's a date. And this follows this, the protocol of the Standards Council of Canada, not just for compost, but for all the voluntary industry standards. Okay. Well, um, if there isn't any more questions coming in, I guess uh, Susan or the Compost Council of Canada is always uh, available to uh, if you have any questions to follow up with at your own convenience. So with that, uh, on behalf of the Green Manitoba, I thank you, Susan, for giving us this update. Thanks very much. Thanks for all your time. Bye-bye.